spiritually, physically that we're going to. But I wanted to read it. It says, the eagle does not fight the snake on the ground. It picks it up into the sky. 
sky and changes the battleground. Mm -hmm. Then it releases the snake into the sky. The, the snake has no stamina, no power, no balance in the air. It is useless, weak and vulnerable, unlike on the ground where it is powerful, wise and deadly. Take your fight into the spiritual realm by wow. praying. And when wow. you're in the spiritual realm, <laughs> God takes over your battle. Don't fight the enemy in this comfort zone. Change the battlegrounds like the eagle and let God take charge through your earnest prayer. And let us not stop praying. I just love that analogy. And I want to read in Ephesians 6, 12. It says, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. Mm -hmm. And the war that's going on physically is really because of the war that's going on spiritually. Yes. It's against the dark spiritual forces and evil is running. And so we have such a great opportunity and privilege to access God in heaven. And we can change the outcome. We can change history. We've heard time and time again in the scripture, the power of prayer and us fighting this battle on our knees. And so I did want to give up you some updates because I've been listening to Sean Wooten that's been online kind of giving up updates, but all of that disciples in Ukraine are safe. Amen. Um, one brother, I think Andy Fleming, him and his family are there in Kiev, and they've been woken up by bombs. And I'll be sharing how they all had to go into the bomb shelter uh, in their basement. And there was 40 of them there. And he was just talking about how could we be a light to our neighbors? How could we be a light during this time? And he's grateful that he's with all of his family. They're, they kind of all live in the same condominium. So they're grateful that they're together during this uh, challenging time. And I was just thinking about our own challenges, my own challenges, my own emotions. And it brought perspective that. Um, I'm grateful that, you know, I, I don't know. It's just like, I, we're not fleeing for our lives. Mm -hmm. We're not running from the souls. We don't have to say goodbye to our husbands and children. And I just feel like this is such a great time. I know thousands and thousands of people have been praying. And I know that with the power of prayer, that God can move heaven and earth to provide miracles. Okay. And so I'll start off. And then for anybody that wants to share scripture and pray, I just think it's such a great opportunity and privilege for us to do this today. Yeah. God, I just do uh, Our battle is not against flesh and blood. The battle is against the dark forces in this world. And as we think about what's going on in Ukraine, and all of our brothers and sisters there, I think about the innocent lives, the young men that have never picked up a gun and they have to fight to defend their freedom and their country. Give them courage, protect all the innocent lives. I think about the women, the children, the babies, um, and just how God that when we pray, you act. You send your angels and you fight this battle in the spiritual realm where we cannot see it. We don't understand it. But I know, God, that you're working. And I'm praying and begging that you would change Putin's hard stone into a heart of flesh to stop this, to stop the bloodshed, to stop his agenda, to have fear in you, and that this can the course of everything that's going on in Europe. Father, I pray for the protection of our brothers and sisters in Ukraine. I pray that you give them faith, strength, 
wisdom, all of our church leaders in Europe. I know that there's a lot of action in Suma, Suma and in Kiev. And there's another place, Father. Um, but I know you know exactly where each and every one are at. Father, shine brightly in those dark places. People are in hiding. They're going to start needing, you know, food and, um, you know, medical help, just the necessities of life. I pray, God, that you would keep the, their internet on because the churches there are relying on Zoom, relying on, you know, being able to connect. Keep the internet on, keep their water running, keep the power and electricity on, God. And for those that are fleeing to those different borders of Moldova and Poland and Romania, thank you for the hearts of people wanting to take in families, want to provide shelter, want to provide food. God, in, in any way that we can, as we continue to pray, I know there's a link now where you can donate and it's going to provide for our brothers and sisters. Father, as we're thinking about that, I'm thinking about my own brothers and sisters here and the health challenges, the emotional challenges. Just life, God, can crush us. But God, we are more than conquerors. You are so much more powerful than the giants in our lives and the problems in our lives. I pray for uh, Gloria. I know she's in a lot of pain. In her jaw and she hasn't been able to sleep please give her um just the right medicine help her to get into the doctor help her to feel better um and just the whole situation was sad but she's gonna you know wrestle with the anniversary of her husband um is that right anniversary it's another it's Somebody a family member and God, you know the details. And I'm just praying for all of our brothers and sisters that are dealing with challenges. I pray that you would lift them up. I pray to God that you would act and hear our prayers and know that God, that we can find peace, peace in you through, through this time. I pray, Father, that there would be a breakthrough in health and emotion and just in a church family, Father, help us to rally around each other because we're all in this together and um, we're in good company. We're not alone. We have each other. We have you. And I'm truly grateful for that. So, Father, I know there's so many more uh, things that we can pray for. Please bring peace in Europe. Please bring peace. Please bring healing to our hearts as we cry out to you as we focus on you and as we wait on you. We love you so much, God. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I can share scripture. Josie, hey, everyone, I just want to say, welcome. Hi, Josie. Better late than ever. Yeah. Okay. And I just want to say something really quick. On the way over, I, I was listening to 92.7, and I guess it's a, a Indiana radio station. And they play really good music, first of all. And then today they had a uh, like a special answer thing going in, and it's in, it's in, in, the, it's in Gary. And uh, they also were uh, wanted to say a, like a prayer too for the people that I mean, uh, uh, yeah, the, because of the, the war going on. And stuff. Yeah. So I thought that was really nice. So the guy who was, you know doing that show to, to think about them because I've been thinking about them too and I and, so and we're uh, yeah. about about people, you know, innocent people dying for no reason. Yeah. Amen. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, um this has been my scripture this week. Psalm one uh, verse one it says Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water 
which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. And uh, I was just thinking, this has been a really rough week for a lot of people. I mean, we've got the war looming over the emotions that you feel yeah. for them. Uh, a lot of us are having work stresses. I think there's a few of us <laughs> that can raise their hand to that. And just life in general has been, it's a rough week. And you can see on the lovely ladies page, the prayer requests and, you know, people are suffering um, in our church and spiritually and emotionally, physically. Um, and I just think that for me, um, I was telling Cherish and our group that when I was a new Christian, trying to figure out how to, how to be a Christian after 30 years of not being, <laughs> one of the things that the person that said the Bible with me said to me, well, do you, just ask yourself, do you want to be a bush or do you want to be a tree? Mm -hmm. And so that simple thing has stuck with me. And when I kind of in a bad place I'm like okay don't be a bush mm -hmm. I need to be a tree right now and I'm going to meditate on God I'm going to pray I'm going to meditate on truth not Satan's lies I'm going to pray and trust and be faithful that God is going to see me through the circumstance and I think for me it's so easy to get caught up in the negativity mm -hmm. of what we're going through and where you feel Stress, you feel uh, hopeless, you, you know, and um, it's hard when you're in that situation to reach out. But I think, you know, coming here is a, a very nice, fresh breath of air and and um, talking to people on the phone. Like Bonnie and I, I think, what, two hours the other night? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that doesn't get to happen often, but it was nice. Um, teenagers. <laughs> yeah. Um, just that we have each other. We don't have to go through life alone. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to pray. Come on, Stacy. All right. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, God, so much for your word. Thank you, God, that you've had people in all of our lives that have shared it with us and help us to... Uh, readjust our focus in life that we live for you now and we focus on you we meditate on your word we pray out to you and we can hold each other's arms up thank you so much for bringing us into your kingdom god and i really uh, am grateful and thankful for the women here and uh, i do pray god that you help us through our challenges and most of all help us to get perspective of those challenges and uh, to choose to be a tree and when we're feeling like a bush that we can reach out to someone and ask for help in Jesus name amen, amen. okay um <clears throat> this week in one of my uh Bible study quiet time um we're reading in numbers and the Israelites had battle and Afterwards, they, um, this is what somebody said. Um, and uh, your servants have counted the soldiers under our command, and not one is missing. Wow. And, <laughs> where's that? Numbers 31, uh, verse 49. Wow. Not one is missing. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just like, even I was like, oh, no, I don't share this. It's like, it's my faith there. <laughs> but it was so encouraged because the eagle, you know, and um, it just this encouraged my heart. I'm pray. Father, I just as I'm thinking this this verse in front of my heart this week it stood out as I was reading, and uh, not one is missing. When you but when we are under your command, when we follow you, when you are our king, our leader, not one will be missing ever. And Father, I think about this in time of war, but even in time of peace, there's always a spiritual war, Father. And I'm so grateful, even as Stinky was sharing about the churches in Ukraine, it just, they said, 
how can we reach out? Father, because that is what this life is about. There is, as we say, trials, tribulations, darkness everywhere. But yet, God, you're perfect. You are still the commander. You are, you are over all. Um, you have King Jesus, Father, and, and we follow him. And, and no matter what, if we just stay close to you, and I pray for the disciples there, just stay close to you, help them stay together, help them to lean on you, and just, be, you know, be one with you, God. And I would say pray for all of us, Father, as with our sadnesses, our pains, um, really powerful emotions, God, just help us, Father, to remember, we follow you, not what will be with Okay. Um, so I don't want this to sound cliche, but the psalm just has been on my heart for the past couple of days. Um, psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures, he leads me beside quiet waters, he refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. And this is kind of the verse that, you know, made me think of this, this psalm. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And I, I think of this, these scriptures, this um, psalm, when when I am going through dark times, because there's something about it, like it gives it gives me hope. It gives me hope that. Even though you think everything is it's the end, but it's not the end. Right. You know, um, God is there. He, he's guiding me. He's, you know, and I think about, you know, the people in Ukraine and in Russia. He's with them. Um, he can be their refreshment. He can be their comfort. He can be their strength. Through all of it, and and same for the things that we go through on a daily basis, the you know the tough times, the emotional um, emotional things that we go through, and the difficult things. Um, anyway, this this scripture encourages me. So let's pray. God, thank you so much that you are our comfort that you lead us inside quiet waters, even in the midst of turmoil. Um, we can find that strength in you. Um, and, and God, when I read the scripture, it, it talks about it being for your name's sake, that you are so good, that you give your goodness to us and comfort us. And God, I pray that through all of this, through everything that's going on in Russia and Ukraine, through all of the, the trials and um, things that go on in our daily lives, that you are glorified. Um, I pray for our, our brothers and sisters in Europe that you would be their strength and their comfort and um, just wrap your arms around them. Lord. Pray all these things in Jesus' name. I think what Sid said, uh, this is a spiritual battle. All battles are spiritual, I think, uh, to some degree, and not all slightly, but uh, more like it. Um, and I appreciate what Stacey said, a prayer that the word that is our guide, our help, mm -hmm. foundation. Yeah. We need to make sure we are not just thinking about the word, word but really believing, standing firm on it. Uh, 
I uh, wanted to read in uh, Second Timothy where Paul is the one that wrote, and uh, uh, he went through a lot. He's a great example of how we need to live. Just as Jesus is a great example, and all the things that were going on in both their lives, they stayed true to the course. And uh, Paul was writing to Timothy, young, young man. And he said in verse 3 of Second Timothy uh, chapter 3, says, but mark this, there will be terrible times in the last wow. day. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money. And it goes on and lists all a bunch of things that very much what today is about. Um, but he goes on, Paul charges this young man, we need to be taking on the same charge ourselves that you, we, however, know all about my teaching, which was Jesus' teaching, my way of life, my purpose, my faith, patience, and love and endurance, the persecution, suffering, what kinds of things happen to me in Antioch, and Iconium, and Lystra, the persecutions I endured, yet the Lord rescued me from all of them. In fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus, that's what we want to do, will be persecuted. While evil men and imposters will go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived, but as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of because you know those from whom you learned it. And from infancy, you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. That's, that's the main battle. That we are wise in Christ Jesus and that wise for salvation we don't get distracted. For all scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the man of man or woman of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. That even when we're going through trials, we still need to stand firm. We want to do the for God. Amen. Father God, I am so grateful for your word that we can stand on it, we can learn from it, we can be encouraged by it, and we can realize that this world is not our home. We are just passing through. And that even if war would break out as close to us as it is to our brothers and sisters in Ukraine and Russia both of them, we pray, God, that we will stay firm. Uh, I appreciate the song that we sang, God, the same gathering home. We need to be saints. We need to be reaching out to others so that they can be saints and that we are gathering home, not in this life, but in the life that you will call us to when we do leave this earth. Help us to remember this is not our home. But God, I know that it's very difficult. It's easy for maybe for me to say right here, sitting in relative comfort, but it's hard for my brothers and sisters. And so we pray, Father, that we will continue praying for them lifting up their arms. We pray, God, that you will open our uh, hearts to help them in any way we can, whether it be financially or whatever, that they will not go alone, but help them to stand firm. God, we do want peace, but I do think God, you want salvation even more for all the people. Pray doors will open that your church will stand firm even through all of this, no matter what's going on around us. We just thank you for hearing this prayer. 
hearing all these prayers here in this room and across the world. Okay. Um, I have been reading Power and Weakness by Marty Rudy in my quiet time. Uh, just started at the yeah, like it's about second Corinthians. And um one of the chapters that I read I wanted to share is about how God chooses not the strength or the strong things of this world. Um, and that's evident in a lot of leaders that he chose in Moses and um, even Paul, uh, who was persecuting the church. And so but God is, it's God's power shines through. And that's what's amazing is that I don't have to be the one uh, to have the strength to do it. So I'll read it in. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 7. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God, not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. And then down in verse 16. Therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes on not what is seen, but what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. I don't have much more to share because I feel like it goes along with a lot of what Pam was sharing and what we've been sharing so far. So let's just go to God in prayer. God, I just come before you in awe and and powerless before you, God. I don't have to be strong because you are so amazing. You are so powerful. You can do anything, God. And I just pray that I can have the faith to believe that. And that Jesus came to this earth to save and to um, bring eternal life, God, that we don't have to live in these light and momentary struggles, God. We don't feel that they're light. We don't feel that they're momentary, but they are, God. You have overcome that. You have overcome these people. We can go through trials and be pushed and, and uh, have things come against us on every side, but you are there to push back. You are stronger than those, God. And I, pray, I pray for my faith to grow, that I can really believe that, God. I pray for the brothers and sisters in Ukraine and Russia, God. I pray that they can feel that their trials that they're going through are life very God, that they can have the faith in you, God, that they can share with people who may not have heard about you or know about you, God. And I just pray that your word and your will is done in all of these areas. God, I pray for us here as we're talking about it, we're talking about it as we go about our days, our friends and our family, God, that we can share that this world is temporary, God, that we can reach people um, who are pressed and crushed, God, that we can have the faith that you save and that we can go to eternal life with you. I pray this all in your name. Amen. I'm going to read just a little bit from Isaiah. I'm sure you can pick up your box. I really like it. Kind of going to go to the end starting. Um, in verse 21, do you not know, have you not heard, has it not been declared to you from the beginning, have you not understood from the foundation of the earth, it is he who sits above the surface of the earth, and it's the heavens are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain, and spreads them out in attempt to dwell in, he it is who reduces the rulers to nothing, who makes the judges of the earth meaningless. And then skipping ahead to 26. 
Lift up your eyes on high and see who has created these stars. The one who leads forth by their leads forth their host by number. He calls them all by name. Because of the greatness of his might and the strength of his power, not one of them is missing. No, 28. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord of the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, does not become weary or tired. His understanding is inscrutable. He gives strength to the weary, and to him who lacks might, he increases power. Though you grow weary and tired, and vigorous young men stumble badly, yet those who wait for the Lord will gain the strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not get tired. They will walk and not be tired. Found that really encouraging after such a time. Yeah. Yeah. And he knows, like, sometimes we kind of forget, or at least I kind of forget. It feels like everything is spinning out of control. Yeah. You know, yeah. so, yeah. Let's pray. God, help us to just remember that you are so on your throne and you see everything, and your power is more mighty than we can understand. Um, and that nothing is happening uh, without your ability, ability to be in control. And help us to trust. Uh, just in the good that this will come, that you will use this to spread the gospel, that you will use this to draw unbelievers to you, um, that you are using all of the heavy things in the world right now to build us and build our faith and extend your God. You know all of us and you call us all by name. None of us are missing. It's in your name. Amen. Amen. Anyone else want to share before we close out? Okay, I wanted to um, close out. Okay, um, I wanted to close out in a song. I think it's so appropriate to just uh, where we're at, Mike, all that's going on. Um, I love Jeremy Camp. There will be a day, and I just feel like that is our goal. In light of all these momentary struggles, it seems like eternity or forever sometimes, but there will be a day that there will be more tears, no more sorrow, no more pain. And until that day, Let's hold on. So, hopefully, my phone is loud enough. I can't hear it.
Let's close out. Father, thank you so much for that encouraging song to remind us that there will be one day where this is all going to be said and done and that we'll be with you, that there'll be no more aches, pain, sorrow, grief, struggle, tears, and pain. But until that day, God, help us to fix our eyes on you. Yeah. Help us to keep running the race and never give up, just like you never give up on us. Thank you for the women here that shared and just the privilege and honor to raise up our prayers before you and that you're acting now. And that is amazing to me that you hear and you act and you answer. Father, we love you. May we walk away refreshed and just uh, reminded of your goodness and Amen. your love and that God that we can be a light even in this dark world that we can encourage and lift up one another um, and wait on your miracle so bless my sisters here and those that weren't here today and that God that we can hold on and wait and be strong at heart and wait on our mighty Lord we love you in Jesus name amen, amen. And thank you, ladies. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Who's on there? Yeah. Okay. Hi, thank you for joining us. Recording. Hi, hello.